Everyone wants to live a long and healthy life with a body which looks and performs how they want it to. Yet so many search for the answers by taking the advice from peers and by following the dietary and training plans of people with different goals and outcomes to which they're searching. Within the health and fitness industry, there's a significant amount of disinformation from a wide variety of self-proclaimed experts, never really tying together what you want or need to hear. There are people who are performing at their best and there are others who don't know where to begin. This podcast aims to take you through the compendium of what is diet and fitness to allow you to design your own trading programs to meet your specific needs. In each episode, we're going to discuss a new topic surrounding diet, fitness and mindset, which builds on previous knowledge. This allows you to understand and appreciate the fundamentals before we delve into the more specific needs of top level athletes. This podcast is hosted by James and Max. James is a registered dietitian and nutritionist who's worked within the NHS and private sector. He specialises in improving athletic performance, enhancing training recovery and accelerating muscle growth. And I'm Max, a strength and conditioning coach who specialises in athletic performance and personal development. I've worked with GB athletes in bobsleigh and rowing and also alongside semi-professional and professional rugby players. Together we hope to provide a wealth of knowledge and value to you, the listener. Thanks for tuning in. This is my athletic compendium. All good? Ready. Ready for another one? Yeah. Here Fantastic. we go again. Here we go again. Hi guys and welcome back to the podcast. It's James and Max here. Um, thanks for tuning in again. Uh, I know last week we said we were going to talk about protein, but we've changed our mind because we're both indecisive. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to start with uh, essentially some tips and tricks for people that really want to get into fitness, don't know where to start really the the basics um, and where you can begin both with fitness and both with nutrition. So might as well get into it. Max, mm-hmm. um, let's start off with, if you if you were, you know, coaching someone brand new um, with their fitness journey, what are some, some bits of advice or tips and tricks that you would, you know, mm-hmm. recommend right from the start? So I've prepared, I've made notes Ooh. Um, of Ooh, things. Right so, um, yeah, so I've got some sort of little points that I kind of recommend to anyone who's just starting out, or even whether they're a client or not. Um, first one would be, and I'm sure you'll agree with this in the nutrition world as well, is learning from the right sources. So we mentioned it a little bit in our very first podcast about, you know, there's a lot of bullshit out there that it's, it's, yeah. you, you don't want. Um, and it's finding... It's learning how to find the right information and the right technique and the right blah blah from someone who's been there and done been that. there done that know and knows it. Um, I'd always suggest as well not in straight away training with a friend mm-hmm. because usually they have bad habits that they'll reflect on to you. Yeah. Um, so it's I personally, it, it depends on you know whether whether you want someone to be with you to kind of help. So, so would you would you say for someone starting off, it's because uh, I suppose you're coming at it from the gym angle, aren't you? Yeah. You know, in terms of gym exercises, mm. would you say it's more beneficial for a startup to to use the the services of a personal trainer? Yeah. Well, um, yes, that's that, in an ideal yes because you know if you've got the the funds for it and, and whatever, then it's it's the best way to go about doing it because you're gonna get someone who's sort of knows what they're talking about and mm-hmm. knows the right technique and don't have bad habits and, and, and know what to look out for in terms of technique. Whereas your mate who's been training for years that hasn't learned off anyone, like any professional as well, yeah. they're going to they're gonna have bad, bad habits as well. So I would always sort of suggest, yes, get a personal trainer or if not, if you have the confidence to just try it and do it sort of on your own with, mm-hmm. with the right sort of research. Yeah, I mean, I think when I first started, I, I was fortunate enough to to essentially have a really high level strength and conditioning coach at my mm. school. So I was put through my paces with him and he taught me good technique. And then I could pass that on to friends, whoever mm. I was training with. But yeah, I suppose I suppose those that don't, you know, aren't, aren't fortunate enough to, to have those. Uh, I found it really useful to learn off YouTube. I mean, there's there's some great technique videos yeah. on there. Um, I know a lot of personal trainers offer videos to do with, you know, certain exercises and how to perform them effectively. Hmm. So I think videos are a good resource for them, aren't they? I think videos are much a much better way of learning how to do a technique than just learning off your mate. 
The reason being is because usually the people who make the videos are personal trainers or are fitness professionals, mm-hmm. whereas your mate might know the technique, but in terms of their actual coaching ability, they've not had the years of experience that a personal trainer might have yeah. done. That's what I was trying to get at before. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not that your mate not, might doesn't you know doesn't know the technical points, but it's just how they coach it. And if you're learning off a YouTube video, at least that way, they're talking they're, you through they're it. They're talking you time. through it and coaching you through it. Yeah. Um, so that's a big one for me. What would your um, next point be? My next would be to create a routine that you can stick to consistently. Mm-hmm. Um, that's not going to be, you know, going every single day because yeah. to start off with, because A, that's not sustainable. Yeah. B, you want to be excited about going to the gym. You don't want to think, oh, here we go again. Yeah. I've got to wake up at Absolutely. 7 o'clock. I mean, to- the, the, most of the gym results, so we're talking about gym, we'll talk about other sort of training and fitness in, in a bit, but I suppose with gym, the, the results come over time. You're not going to mm. get them within a month. Well, you'll get some within a month, and obviously it's it's periodic growth. But mm. you're not gonna get where you you know you're not gonna look like a professional bodybuilder after three months of training. You need that sustained, mm. repetitive cycle of mm. constantly training, and it's consistency that is key. Mm. So, so yeah, I suppose I agree with you on that one. Mm. If if you're going six seven times a week and you're getting bored by week three, mm. that's not as effective as training three, four times a week and going mm. for three years. Yeah, exactly. Um, and sort of with the, that routine, once you kind of said, okay, yeah, I'm going to go Monday, Wednesday, Friday every week, mm-hmm. treat it like you would a dentist appointment. Don't, you know, change around the time that you're going to go. So, you know, if, if you say that you're going to go at six in the morning mm-hmm. on the Wednesday, stick to six o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday, don't wake up that morning and be like, oh, I'll just go this afternoon. Yeah, yeah, because get it done. You, yeah, get it done. If, when, once you've made your plan, stick with it. Um, like you would a dentist appointment, like I said, just uh, just for the sake of creating consistency, mm-hmm. but also um, keeping sort of. And I think uh, get off that point, for a lot of people starting out, it's always the fear of you know, oh, I'm not going to enjoy this workout. I'm not going to enjoy this training session, whatever. But when you get there and you do the work and you finish, you feel amazing after. Hmm. I, I, you know, I've had countless times where, you know, it's it's pissing down with rain on a Thursday Thursday night and we've both got rugby training mm. and you don't want to go, you really don't want to go and you turn up and you have a great time and you enjoy yourself and you finish the session you're like, that was good fun. That was good, yeah. And you, in your own head you're almost like, why did I, why did I have that negativity towards it? Why why didn't I just do it? Mm. And I suppose, like you say, if you just get up and you, you, know, you have your time in your head and you do mm. that, it's done, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's that's the way forward for it. Um, so we've got, make sure you're learning off the right sources. We've got, stick to a plan. Mm-hmm. What's the next one? What's your next tip? Um, so sort of going into a little bit more specifics with programming, so i.e. what you're going to do in that gym session. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've never touched a weight before, if you've never been in a gym before and you wanted to pursue a, an athletic career or like a, a you know, fitness journey or whatever it is, um, is start really, really simple. Give yourself simple exercises. If This is assuming you're not getting a personal trainer or an online coach or whatever who's programming for you. Mm-hmm. Um, stick to real basic exercises. You don't have to be doing Olympic lifting in your first few sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I would suggest you do is work on some key compound lifts, such as a squat, a bench press, a deadlift maybe. Yeah. But going just the bar weight or a very, very low weight and just working on technique for the first month or two at yeah. least. Just so you're confident before you start lifting heavy weight because that's going to reduce injury. Uh, it's going to make sure that you're 100% confident and comfortable in that position. Um, yeah, and, and, and otherwise you can still see results with these simpler exercises like a walking lunge, which most people can do yeah for an exact just one example um while you're sort of working on the bigger Mm -hmm. and and just just for some clarity for those that don't know why don't you explain the difference between compound and isometric movements good good question um so a compound movement is where you're moving multiple joints all in one movement um so a squat you'd be using your your hip knee and ankle um where you're using like i said multiple joints multiple muscle groups um an isolated exercise would be where you're moving one joint mm-hmm. and 
very few muscles like a bicep curl from there to there. Um, so a compound movement, obviously you're, you're recruiting more muscles, you're going to get a little bit more weight or a little bit more load in it. So mm-hmm. you're going to get different hormone responses, um, like growth hormones and, and, and stuff like that. Um, more on them later. More on them later. I'm not going to go too <laughs> deep into it. Um, so, and usually you'd start your session with a compound movement and then you'd go into isolated movements, which is, you know, your bicep curl. The reason for that is A, reduced in, reduce injury chances, um, but also your when you're doing your compound lifts, it makes it more effective and you're not fatigued going into yeah. those big compound lifts. Sounds good. Um, so yeah, a little, <laughs> little bit of... Um, a deviation. Recap. Yeah, de- deviation, but a bit of a recap. Uh, with your programming, when you're doing your sessions, stick with the simple exercises and then just work on your technique for your, your big compound movements, like I just mentioned. Um, Definitely. And, and, and if you're you know a, a real beginner, just get familiar with the weight room or get familiar mm. with wherever you are starting to train, even if it's you know you're not you're not deciding to do any weights and you're you're just on the cardio machines. Get familiar with the with the machines. Get familiar with your surroundings. Know where everything is and start to feel comfortable being there because you know if you're starting a fitness journey um obviously this this podcast is we're tailoring it towards athletes Mm. but ultimately we do want to incorporate everyone Mm. in terms of fitness Mm. so if you are beginning get familiar with with the fitness room the weight room because you know you're going to need that as your athletic career develops Mm. you're going to need these compound lift isometric movements and and the more stuff we get into you're going to need those um olympic lifts that we've said don't touch on on yet but essentially get familiar with the weights so that's tip three (laughs) go on tip four um tip number four i this one i personally think if you've got those first three tips down is the probably one of the biggest ones the one um Go into your fitness pre- um, journey with no pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to be able to enjoy it. Don't ruin it with unrealistic goals. So yeah. what I mean by that is what a lot of people do is they'll have a goal in mind, whether it's weight loss or whether they want to get faster or whatever, which is great. It's great to have your goal and everything. Um, but initially, don't put yourself under so much pressure in terms of time to get it done. Yeah. The main thing is you want to enjoy it. You want to be going to these sessions and thinking, okay, what am I working on today? Mm-hmm. Like, and just not putting too much pressure on yourself to, to achieve lo- your goals straight away. Um, because ultimately, if you enjoy it, you're going to stick at it for longer Definitely. and you're going to get your results in, you know, as, as a byproduct of you enjoying going to the gym. Absolutely. Um, as soon as you start putting pressure on yourself to do it, that's when you start to feel a bit more stressed in mm-hmm. your sessions and you're not hitting as you when you don't hit results you're thinking shit I'm a failure I'm a failure whatever um you want to be have this is me personally I have a very laid back approach to my training Uh I make sure that I'm taking my time in my sessions and I'm just getting the maximum out of those lifts whether it's you know technically or whether it's you know working on my squat depth or Mm -hmm. whether it is pushing the weight as heavy as I can but exactly um, just not putting too much pressure on yourself your your gym sessions and your you know, strength and conditioning, your speed sessions should all primarily be enjoyed. It, like you mm. said, it's the journey. You're going to be doing this. This, the results aren't going to come after two, three months. They're going to come after two, three years. Mm. And if you're not enjoying it, you won't stick it out for two, three years. You need to make sure that you know that time is yours. Whether it's an hour, an hour and a half, two hours, three, four times a week, whatever you choose to do. As Max said, stick with. The plan and and go with that um that time is yours that's that's really important that you're just enjoying it you know listen to your own music stuff that you enjoy um that's your time away from other people to fix your head get out your anger you know if you want to lift heavy because you, you don't want to kill someone that's absolutely fine you know we all have those sessions <laughs> where you just go in and you just it is you and the weights mm. and there's nothing better than that when you mm fully enjoy it so make sure you are enjoying it um have you got any more tips Um, or am i I pushing the boat out asking for another one uh no no you're not um so in terms of um it's kind of along the same lines as that enjoyment of it um Mm. but not only sort of in the gym 
but enjoy the learning process around it. For example, I mean, you're listening to this podcast right now, so that must mean that you have an interest in it and, and to learn a little bit more about the industry and about yeah. nutrition, about, um, you know, fitness in the gym and so on. Um, you've got to enjoy doing your research, researching what's the best method to yeah. gain muscle, what's the best way to hit hypertrophy, what's the best way to improve my speed, how am I going to get my power sessions done, blah, blah, blah. That kind of research that you do on your own is, you know, enjoy it and, yeah. and find interest in it. Again, it's along the same lines as what I was talking about before with your training, but in the actual learning aspect of it as well. Yeah, I but agree. Listen to exciting, fun podcasts like this rather than the boring Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head, really. You, you need to enjoy mm. every aspect of it, whether it's the training side of it, whether it's the dietary prep, because ultimately... The, the reason why we've done this podcast together is because you can't have one without the other. You need to eat effectively. You need to train effectively. But ultimately, you need you need to enjoy both. Mm. Um, I enjoy food, as you can probably tell. Max enjoys training. I enjoy training. But again, they, they both need to come together. You don't see a top-level professional athlete who has a poor training regime or a poor diet. They have the best of both. Mm. Um, and ultimately, they... Even professional athletes, they start with a key interest. You know, whether it's a weightlifter, whether it's a rugby player, a netball player, a hockey player, they've always started with the enjoyment factor. And if you're really trying to start your, you know, fitness journey, enjoy it. Mm. Um, I think, so, so we've touched on some tips that people can, can start off with. What... What, what would you recommend to someone, you know, who has never really exercised before. They really want to just start, but they're so fearful of starting. Mm. What would you Good say? Good question. So with that sort of anxiety around the gym or that fear of, um, you know, do, it's doing something new at the end of the day. You know, if I was to be told, Max, you're going to go and ride that horse right now, mm -hmm. I'd be nervous because they're massive and they're scary and whatever. Yep. And it's the same with the gym. You know, you might feel, you know, you've got all these massive blokes around you in the gym that mm -hmm. are lifting weights and slamming them and, and grunting and whatever else that they do. Um, and it can be very intimidating. And if that is you, um, you're not the only one at all. Um, Absolutely. As a, I've been a personal trainer, excuse me, a one-to-one -one personal trainer for the last three or four years now. And, um, and it's very, very common. And what I'd recommend to you is, again, if you've got the funds, a personal trainer is the best way forwards. Mm -hmm. It really, really is because Again, you've got that mate. If they're a good personal trainer, they do become a mate, um, unless they're boring. Yeah. Um, they become a mate, and um, you they know from what experience they're there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they become a mate, and but they know what they're doing, and then they're going to coach you through it, and they're going to make sure that you're comfortable doing it. Um, and there's, there's again, it's taking that pressure, like I mentioned away um, before. It takes that pressure away. Um, so you know they're going to show you exactly what to do. You're going to replicate it. Um, and, and they're going to put you in the right positions and, and you'll start with a really low weight and you can make mm -hmm. sure that you absolutely nail it before you start lifting heavier and heavier. Yeah. Um, and, and that should take that fear of not knowing what's happening or what not, what, what's going to happen, uh, yeah. you know, what you're doing next. It takes that away a little bit. Yeah. Um, if, you know, you don't want a personal trainer, um, I would very strongly recommend going away from chain gyms like Pure Gym. Um, yeah. Because there are, A, no one in there really knows what they're doing, really. Yeah. Um, and also, it's a lot busier. There's a lot more of that kind of... Intimidation factor. Intimidation factor. You've got a massive, massive mix of people, whether it's a, a person who's been injecting steroids in the changing rooms just before, or whether it's... Someone who's just some, starting as well. Someone who's just starting, or some old bloke that's staring at all the girls doing their exercises mm -hmm. it's like there's such a wide variety of people whereas if you go into sort of an independent gym that's a little bit smaller they're usually a little bit ni a nicer environment mm -hmm. that's what I think personally um, yeah. so that might help as well the environment that you're in is, is you know if, if you go one. into I, I think important. also you you know if you want to start your, your fitness I keep saying journey but whatever you want to call it you know, you don't even have to step into a gym. It's, it's mm -hmm. yeah. you know, start going for a walk, enjoying being outside, enjoying being one-to-one -one with nature, you know, listening to 
whether you want to listen to the natural sounds or whether you want to listen to your own music, just enjoy being and moving. If you want to go for a run, you know, if you want to go for a cycle, it's about getting some fresh air, opening up your lungs, moving, um, and, and again, you know, sticking to a regime where you can go two, three times a week to start off with and you can build on that. Mm. Um, I, I think for me, you know, we, we've we played rugby from such a young age that it's almost difficult for us to, to see us not playing sport and not mm. getting into it. But I, I really think we've been blessed in the fact that we, we were put into mm. a, a team sport where you know you can meet new people we we meet new people each year with new players and you instantly form a new bond with new people and and can start a new conversation and find out new interests from other people so if you really are apprehensive about starting exercise then maybe join a club Mm -hmm. or whether it's a tennis club rugby club netball club and meet new people start new conversations and just enjoy being with other people and be enjoy being outside Mm. um I think once you start getting your heart rate up and you know the endorphins kick in, everything mm. feels good. Definitely, um, definitely. And then whether you decide to step into the weight room or whether you start to do your own home training or you know really team sports in terms of playing matches, that's totally down to you and you'll do that when you're ready. But I think starting is always the hardest factor. Mm. But pick a routine, stick with it mm. and do it. And like you said, with the... Just using the tennis example as a as one, um, you know, if you join a tennis club and you start playing and you start thinking, oh, I really enjoy this. Mm. I want to get better, you know, physically. Um, then that's another kind of yeah thing a, that a initiates spur, you and exactly. wants you to. You, it's, it's the want to go to the gym to it's get that fitter enjoyment factor. More reactive. You're enjoying exactly. tennis, yeah. so you want to go and get fitter. You and want get to better, get stronger, yeah. so you can hit the ball harder. Mm. And that's when the competitive edge comes out. Exactly. We all have one. I think, you know, we've, we've hit the nail on the head with what we can do fitness-wise to start off with. I'm just going to round off with some some dietary tips, mm. you know, if you are starting off. Um, when I first begun getting into fitness, I immediately cut out sugars, which, you know, I wouldn't say is a bad thing in hindsight because... You know, the simple changes that you can make in your diet that will improve your overall health. Um, and I think cutting out refined sugars, so those, those are sugars that are added to things like sweetened drinks, cakes, biscuits. Um, I just cut them out completely. You don't need to cut them out completely, but maybe just reduce the amount you're eating. Things like chocolates as well. They're, you know, they don't need to be an everyday occurrence. Um, you can enjoy them every now and then. I think choosing leaner meats as well. So, you know, I'm not saying you can't have red meat or anything, but cutting off the visible fat that you can see or potentially swapping it for a you know, chicken or fish where you've got a white meat, a white poultry, it means there's low saturated fat, so it's more beneficial for your health. Swapping from frying to grilling is another good, you know, way to, to improve your health, especially if you're, you know, starting to become an athlete. Start steaming start grilling your food rather than frying and adding oil because that makes it unhealthy eat more vegetables drink more water those are definitely things that lots of people don't do is eat enough fiber so that's your fruit and vegetables get all your vitamins and minerals um, and make sure you drink enough water for hydration especially if you start exercising you're going to need more um, because you will be sweating it out trying to think is there anything else for said beginners I think um, from what I'm, you know, I'm sure you'll back me up on it. Is when it comes to nutrition, just in the same way that you would, you know, go into the gym, is you don't have to do everything all at once. Mm-hmm. Just to take little steps and little improvements Definitely. each day, each week, because um, training change things too dramatically again, like in the gym, mm-hmm. it's going to, sh- you know, shock you and uh, potentially put you off it, or um, you know, it can be too overwhelming, too, you know, too much, too little. Uh, too, too much too quickly um, I, th- I think what people also get caught up on is when they see you know their their figure and they either want to gain weight or lose weight you know be thinner or or be have less body fat they they think they need to drastically change mm. you know their physical activity or they need to drastically change their diet 
And actually, you only need a, you know, an extra 200 calories to put on weight, and you only need less, you know, 200 calories less than what you're currently eating on a sustained period to lose weight. 200 calories is nothing, you know, it's it's two bananas worth. Um, probably shouldn't use the healthy alter, a healthy mm, example. <laughs> example of that, but it's essentially two bags of crisps less a day to lose weight. Um, if you're eating three meals a day, having regular snacks, it is a simple case of probably cutting out one of those snacks, not completely stripping and having salads every meal. Mm. Um, so it is about making those small changes to start off with, and you'll see the ball rolling and you'll get momentum, you'll see results occurring, and that will only spur you to keep going. Um, and obviously, as we delve deeper into this podcast, hopefully we can give you more value and more suggestions of what you can take away and, and implement into your own life. Um, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, I think just rolling on from what you just said then, um, I'm trying to, just as you were saying, I was trying to remember this one phrase was like a 1% improvement on like sub, subcategories is a big thing yeah. in the wrong range, you know what I mean? So. Um, yeah, it doesn't have to be loads, you know, just an extra half an hour of sleep, or, you know, cutting Absolutely. a bag of crisps out a day or, mm-hmm. you know, doing 30 minutes of exercise, add all of those up and it, all of a sudden yeah. you... It's the, you, mind, it's lot, the minute lot. changes and mm. the minute increments in, in percentage that you're improving yourself each day, they all add up. If you're doing them 365 days of the mm. year, that 1% all adds up and it compounds on each other. Whereas if you're not making any changes and you think, I'll start next week, I'll start next month, mm. and then it becomes next year and you've done nothing in a year. Whereas if you just make a slight change mm. and then the following day you make another slight change, building on the last day, you know, over a course of a year, you'll make drastic improvements and mm. you'll look back and say, look how far I've come. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I think that wraps it up for this I episode. Um, thanks for listening, guys. Uh, thanks for watching if you're watching us on YouTube hopefully the video has not stopped this week but we'll find out when we (laughs) come to stop (laughs) lovely alright we'll catch you guys next week thank you take care bye 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 arrivederci arrivederci I feel like we have to do that yeah yeah. (laughs) alright cool